and welcome you're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UA TV. In Ukraine, civil society plays a central role in driving reforms, influencing legislation, cooperating with government and local authorities. Helping its development is one of the goals of the United Nations Development Program in Ukraine. To talk more about this, we're joined in the studio today by Olena Ursula. She is the civil society project coordinator at UNDP Ukraine. Helen, thank you for coming. Hello. So tell us about the program. Well, actually, this program is implemented by the United Nations Development Program on the financial support of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Denmark. Mm -hmm. And it's basically the second phase of the project already. And the previous one lasted for another four years, so we can't say that we are quite a new program. What are the results of the previous program? In the previous phase of the program, we were focusing on developing the network of the civil society hubs, uh, the way we call them. Mm -hmm. These are the organizations, not the hubs in the sense that we are used to understand like the physical spaces, but in the sense that these are the organizations which became the regional leaders, which are trained on a certain methodology, mm -hmm. which are governed democratically, can work with the volunteers, are financially sustainable, and can provide respective support to their peer, smaller civil society organizations to engage together mm -hmm. in promoting democratic reforms, human rights, and uh, having a stronger voice at the local level. Okay, and what is happening during the second phase? During the second phase, we are basically extending the network of the civil society hubs. We want to have 15 strategic partners in different regions of Ukraine because we believe that very often the reforms which are taking place at the central level they are not well understood by the citizens at the grassroots le re level in the communities, in the municipalities, in the regions. And we want to have reliable partners who will be able to help bring this voice and make it heard at the national level. So uh -huh. What is the process of this? How do you see this happening of the voice explaining to the gra grassroots people uh, the, the essence of the reforms being implemented in the country? So all these organizations, they know the local democracy tools, they very well know the methods of civic participation and ensuring civic participation in process of decision making at the local level. So whenever, for example, in context of decentralization reform, the amalgamated communities are being created, our civil society hubs are helping the authorities to use the civic participation tools for developing the strategy of the amalgamated community so that it becomes not only the vision of the authorities but also with participation of citizens. Mm -hmm. It is also due to ensuring youth civic participation. We work really extensively together with the Ministry of Youth and Sports of Ukraine mm -hmm. to make sure that young people become more active, more conscious citizens of the country, that they uh, create youth councils and with support of the youth workers, they participate in decision making as well. And do they? Are they, they interested? Do. They do. Uh, the sociological surveys show that, in fact, a lot of young people, they want to participate, but very often they do not because they lack either knowledge or skills or they do not have guidance from anyone how to do it, mm -hmm. what, what the procedures are and whom to address for various issues. So this is what we are helping to do, to build this connection, to build those bridges between the youth mm -hmm. workers through the civil society with the authorities at different levels in the municipalities, in the regions. At okay. the are you level. working with any international partners? Well, or is it purely course. Ukrainian initiative? Uh, no, it's not purely Ukrainian initiative. First of all, we have um, the large work direction is bringing the civil society voice of Ukrainian NGOs to the international level through the international human rights reporting mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So these are the uh, UN system um, agencies. Mm -hmm. And you, as you know, Ukraine ratified many conventions and treaties and reports yeah. on a regular basis on the situation with the human rights in the country. So we are helping to 
um, to teach the civil society organizations to produce alternative report, to monitor the situation in, the, in their communities, in their regions, prepare the alternative reports and voice this at the international level. And of course, in this process, we have a lot of international partners like the Human Rights Foundation House. This is the global organization which organizes mm -hmm. a lot of the events of this kind. And of course, the agencies which are part of the United Nations system. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, how would you evaluate the Ukrainian civil society? Are we active enough? Um, I would say that civil society in Ukraine is very diverse mm -hmm. and of course it is very unevenly developed. If you compare Kiev and the regions, it's of course a, a difference. Very often there are unique Is the change really drastic or is it not that noticeable? Well. Uh, very often it is because the, um, some, of, or some organizations they possess really unique knowledge and different expert knowledge and expertise in some reforms. Mm -hmm. And of course they are, um, they are visible at the national level and their voice is heard very well. But at the regional level very often the, you don't have that many active organizations and this is why those which are active they are trying to cover all the topics. Mm -hmm. And this is why they, they are not so narrowly expert specialized in different areas because they need to tackle many problems and many challenges. How can this, well I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it a problem, but how can you address this issue to have more narrowly pointed NGOs in the regions of Ukraine so that every NGO or any company is actually um, tackling one issue at a time and not spreads around everything that needs to be captured? Well, there are several different ways how to help uh, make this happen. Uh, one, of course, is the coalition building and networking of the mm -hmm. civil society organizations. So that's what you do. With that's the what we Good. do, but not only us, mm -hmm. because we are partnering with that uh, a lot with the reanimation package of reforms. Mm -hmm. As you know, this is a, uh, the national level network of expert NGOs which are trying to support the government in driving the reforms. But right now for them, it's also a priority to go into the regions and to help the regional uh, civil society organization build similar models in their oblast. Mm. So we are trying to make sure that our hubs, whose task is to support the civil society in general for organizational development, they work very closely in coordination with those regional platforms and networks that reanimation package of reforms is now trying mm -hmm. to create. So that these two, they really supplement each other. And another issue, another area is uh, organizational development. This is uh, our area of expertise. We are trying to promote the institutional development of CSOs. We have a certain methodology, the approach, how the organization can assess its weaknesses and strengths. Share? In, uh, What's yeah. the methodology? I brought it with me. I can share with you the... Oh, there were yeah. Tell, just tell. So the methodology is uh, basically very, it's called the three circle methodology. Um, the organization assesses itself um, uh, according to a certain set of indicators and criteria, mm -hmm. what it is doing internally as an organization, how it's functioning, then what it is doing externally, mm -hmm. uh, what are its program areas of expertise and also what are uh, like this, the third circle is to relate which means which means the, the circle of partners the circle of uh, audience target audiences that organization is cooperating with mm -hmm. and all other uh, um, partners that they so try to engage. taking all these three criteria into account how do you define if your company is successful um, uh, there is uh, this methodology has very clear numbers uh -huh. when you uh, and usually the, the, the assessment of the CSO is followed by the appreciative inquiry approach, which mm -hmm. means that it should be external, mm -hmm. but the expert is not like an auditor or is not like a person who is trying to find faults mm -hmm, within mm -hmm. your activity, but someone who comes, who asks you the questions about what you are doing, about the status of your organization and its development, mm -hmm. and then tries to identify the areas which really need improvement and the areas which will help your organization to become a really strong and reliable partner for anyone in the region. 
and provides the report and the organization then develops the capacity development plan depending on the recommendations of the report. Mm -hmm. uh, within our uh, program we are supporting a certain number of, this organ of these organizations to implement these capacity development plans but of course we cannot cover too many. That is why we recommend very often for the organizations to the organizations either to participate in some trainings by our hubs or to get, approach them for consultations or to get support from other sources, which are also many these days in Ukraine. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. That was very, very interesting. Thanks for coming. That was Olena Ursu. She is a civil society project coordinator at UNDP Ukraine. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more with UATV.